biggest changes since the diagnosis, good and bad? Okay, well, off the top, Michelle and I are still together, because if that level of understanding wasn't reached, she probably, she probably would have done me. <laughs> or I, I, like, it wouldn't have worked out. Well, it's taken a lot of uh, a lot of, of processing power to compre- like recomprehend, reunderstand me relative to the world in a way. Like, because there's so many things that I had uh, that I understood in my head. Like, I already had a lot of inner dialogue, right, about what I am. Naturally, the inner dialogue starts to change, right? Because now it's like, well, because that, and it's like, no, that's not me. I'm actually like this. And so that takes fucking weeks and months. Actually, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. The first month was rough. So, yeah. So, like, it's a good thing from the standpoint of, like, you learning about yourself. It's, it's, it makes the... It shows you that life is a never-ending adventure. But at the same time, it's really exhausting. Right? And it's a lot to take in. And, and, and there's no... Like, you have to throttle how much you allow yourself to go down that, those rabbit holes. So that's tough. What are some bad things? I don't think there have been any bad things. I think it, there were hard things. Yeah, I don't know, like bad. I mean, I I could think of okay, so I I I could think about what someone might think would be bad for somebody who learned that. I told I told my boss up north. I told both my immediate bosses. I'm like, hey, just so you know, I have a high functioning form of autism called Asperger's, and I explained to them it, and it helped. And I told a couple of people that I was closer with up north. Like, my dad doesn't think that what I did is a really good idea. But then he was totally cool with me saying that, thanks. Like, I appreciate your concern, but I'm, it's okay. And he's like, okay, you know, that's fine. Uh, but to him, he's worried that people get the wrong idea and people, people might talk behind your back about you. And it's, it's fair, because it happened. We want to break that stigma, though. Uh, yeah, consciousness shift. Mass consciousness shift. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if anything's really been bad. I got to sit in through the diagnosis, which was huge. And there's lots of things that I understand now about Andrew that I don't take personally. Like, Mm. if he isn't being emotional or if he doesn't react the way I would hope a guy would that I'm dating, I know that it's because his mind works differently. He's Mm. also come a long way with communicating you printed the feeling wheel. You started learning how to talk about feelings a little bit more. Yeah. You also learned how to ask, do you want support or advice? Yeah. Because we listen or fix it. Because you used to just blurt advice sometimes and it would hurt my feelings. I, I assumed everybody just wanted you to fix what they were asking me about rather than just to listen and not talk. Just when he's being really picky about something, it used to bother me big time, like how his clothes fit or how uh, something's really? working. Oh, yeah. She calls me high maintenance. It's like... You are high maintenance. <laughs> it drives me crazy. But now I know that it's a sensory thing and those things well, are really important to you. They are very important to me. 